Hello friends, today I'll discuss about various oil and gas fill structures and vessels. But first, we need a short introduction about how oil and gas forms. We call them fossil fuel, but contrary to the popular myth, petroleum and natural gas do not originate from decomposed dinosaurs. Research indicates that petroleum and natural gas originated from zooplankton and algae. During their lifetimes, these organisms create energy from photosynthesis and locks precious carbon in their cell. Over the geologic time scale, these free-floating zooplankton and algae die, settle to the ocean floor and accumulate as sediment. Over millions of years, the sediments build up and at elevated pressure and temperatures, the decaying organic materials are transformed into a dark waxy material called kerogen. Kerogen is an intermediary stage in the development of petroleum. The process of converting the original organic material into kerogen is called catagenesis process. During the catagenesis process, which may take several million years, the kerogen is cooked in the high temperature environment and the long-chain kerogen molecules are cracked into shorter chain hydrocarbon molecules. These hydrocarbon molecules then get trapped under an impermeable cap rock. Geologists need to first survey and identify these various rock layers, and for that we need seismic survey. Seismic vessel sends a low-frequency sound wave, which penetrates rock layers and reflects back to hydrophones stored behind the vessel. These reflected waves help us identify various layers of rock and find the hydrocarbon reservoir. We then need to drill down to these reservoirs to find how much hydrocarbon reserve they have. For that, we need drilling rigs. In shallow water, say up to 75 meter, we use jack-up rig. They are three-legged specialized vessels, pins their leg in the seabed to lift them up from the water and drill into seabed. In deeper water, we use semi-submersible drilling rig. These have huge ballast tanks to lower themselves in the water and may use either multiple anchors to stay in one place or they could use dynamic propulsion with the help of multiple thrusters connected to a central computer. In much deeper water, we use special vessels with dynamic propulsion. We call them DP rig. Now that we have found our hydrocarbon reserve, depending on the water depth, we can now use various methods to bring that hydrocarbon to shore facility. For pumping out the hydrocarbons, we need to install a platform in shallow waters, which will be pinned down to the seabed. The platform is normally in two segments. Bottom part is called a jacket, which is placed on the seabed, and then a big metal pipe or pile is driven to hold the jacket in place. The top side is then placed on the jacket and welded to make a platform. Now, there could be many different types of platform, drilling platform, processing platform, accommodation platform, etc. Depending on the water depth at the area, even the platforms are also varied. Some may be cable tension platform and some even could be gravity platform, some monopile platform and some are multi-leg platform. We may not always have a surface platform to drill and extract hydrocarbons. Subsea templates are also installed for rig to drill through them and then the hydrocarbons are channeled via a series of pipelines to various facilities nearby or far. These templates are remotely controlled for the flow of hydrocarbons. Talking about pipelines, these are very essential to transport raw material for processing. All the subsea templates and platforms are interconnected with pipelines carrying gas and liquid hydrocarbons, drilling fluid, etc. To support the manufacturing, transport, installation, operations and maintenance, we need a huge variety of offshore vessels and barges. We already talked about seismic survey vessel. We also need a specific survey vessel to carry out bathymetry and geophysical survey to understand the depth and seabed morphology. 
Barges are kind of floating metal blocks with specific equipment and facilities built upon them depending on the type of work they will be carrying out. We have cargo barges to carry huge loads like templates, jackets or platform, loads of pipelines and piles. Accommodation barges work near the platform and they will have a deck crane on them. Most of these barges do not have self-propulsion and they rely on tugboats or anchor handling vessels to tow them to their destination and place their anchors on seabed. These HVs are very powerful vessels and can be used in multi-role operations. Then we have heavy lift derrick barges with huge crane capacity to lift and install various offshore infrastructures. Pipeline barges are specially equipped with an extension called stinger at their stern to help lay pipelines at seabed. Depending on the depth of the water, these barges can vary in sizes and laying operations. These pipeline barges are constantly being supplied with 12 meter section of pipes by cargo barges. Pipeline barges can use anchors to lay pipe, some have propulsion system and some may use dynamic propulsion. There are many different types of barges depending on what type of job they will be doing. There are flexible pipe lay barge, electrical cable and optic fiber laying barges, pipe riser installation barges, diving operation barges and dive support vessels. A lot of time the crude oil can be transported via a crude carrier ship instead of pipeline. There are single point mooring buoy where a ship can moor. The SPM is normally anchored to the seabed and oil pipelines are attached to it. A crude carrier ship can pump in crude oil from the SPM and carry it to the shore facility. There is also a huge ship called FPSO or floating production storage and offloading. Their job is to pump crude from the drill template on the seabed, store them on board and offload them to another smaller crude carrying vessels. These huge ships are anchored to the seabed. There is also FSO or floating storage and offloading vessels. They just do not drill and simply store and offload the crude to smaller carriers. Nowadays you may also have seen offshore wind turbines are very common and you need some big barges to carry and install them on the seabed. Most of the vessels that I have already discussed can also be used here for installation and laying of the power cables. I hope I have covered most of the large structures and vessels that operate in offshore oil and gas fields. If I have missed out on any of the important topics, please let me know in the comments below. And lastly, uh, please subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe, whatever he says, you know what to do.